The Deadbeat by Wilfred Owen. We're going to learn about poetic form, we're going to learn a bit about irony and a bit about the use of dialogue and description as we go through this poem. Read it carefully, The Deadbeat, before I, you listen to me explain it and try and work out what's going on. Just a brief explanation of the title. Deadbeat is a slang term or colloquialism. That means a conversational term. It's not quite strong as slang. Slang is like often, you know, real youth speak. But this is a term we still use today. A deadbeat is someone who's useless, totally pathetic. He dropped more sullenly than wearily. Lay stupid like a cod heavy like meat, and none of us could kick him to his feet, just blinked at my revolver blearily, didn't appear to know what was on, or see the blasted trench at which he stared. So we have an image of a man who just collapsed like a cod, but he's collapsed in a sullen way, um, not in a weary way. In other words, he's like resentful. He seems to have deliberately done this, rather than being tired. So those two adverbs, sun, sullenly and wearily, are important, and they create a rhythm, actually, of this kind of flopping fish. Um, and notice uh, the rhythm in the next line, like a cod, heavy like meat. We have the rhythm of the heaviness and the floppiness of this man. None of us could kick him to his feet. Powerful verb, kick him. You know... They're trying to kick him to his feet. It's not a very sympathetic treatment of someone who seems to have given up completely. Just blinked at my revolver, blearily. Um, the, the, he didn't respond to the officer who is in charge, pointing a revol revolver, a gun at him, and telling him he had to get up. Didn't know, appear to know a war was on. Had completely lost any sense of what's going on in the world. Or see the blasted trench at which he stared. He, he's... You know, just not aware of what's going on at all. Uh, we've got a picture here of a soldier who seems in a similar sort of state, um, and we've got in the background, you know, an idea of why that he might be feeling this way. I'll do him in, he whined. If it's hand spared, I'll murder him, I will. Um, he whined. Whine's an important verb here. He's whining because it, when you whine, you're moaning about something, but you're, you're powerless, aren't you? You're not actually doing anything. And he, he, it's all bluster, isn't it, what he says? I'll murder them, I will. So we get insight into the deadbeat's mind that he actually does want to fight, but he doesn't seem to be in any world that's real. He's living in his head. He's murdering them in his head. A low voice said, "Is blighty, perhaps he sees. All, his pluck's all gone, dreaming of all the valiant that aren't dead. Bold uncles, smiling ministerially. Maybe his brave young wife, getting her fun in some new home, improved materially. It's not these stiffs that have crazed him, nor the hun. So it's blighty, it's him thinking about Britain or England that he sees. His pluck's all gone, his, his bravery is all gone. Pluck meaning bravery. Um, dreaming of all the valiant, dreaming of all the brave people that aren't dead and not dead. Bold uncles at home, smiling ministerially. So older people at home, older men at home, talking in a kind of very self-important way. Or he's maybe thinking of his young wife getting her fun in some new home. Um, getting her fun, a sort of double-edged phrase. Perhaps she's going off with someone else in the new home that they have together. Improved materially. She's doing fine. She's getting more money. But he's doing terribly in the trench. Um, and this perhaps is driving him crazy. It's not these stiffs have crazed him. It's not the dead bodies that have crazed him. Nor the Hun. Nor the Germans. We sent him down at last, out of the way, unwounded, stout lad before that straff. Malingering? Stretcher bearers wink, not half. Next day I heard the doc's well whiskied laugh. That scum you sent last night soon died. Hooray! Um, 
they so they send him away out of the way to unwounded to the hospital not knowing what to do with him then the officer the owen who's speaking the poem says he's a stout lad he was actually quite a good person he was a brave person um reliable person before that straff before all of that uh, annoyance all of that trouble malingering the stretcher bearer's wink not half so malingering is when you're pretending to be ill pretending to uh, that something's wrong with you um, and the stretcher bearers the people carrying him say yeah definitely not half um, so we get through the dialogue a sense of this world don't we we get a sense of the commentary that goes on with the soldiers we get a sense of the um, soldier himself the deadbeat himself you know imagining he's going to murder everyone um, and then we hear the doctor well whiskied you know this doctor dosed up on whiskey treating everyone the scum you sent last night soon died so the deadbeat has become scum he's no better he's worthless it's a brutal world to people who dropped out who deserted or who pretended to be ill um we've got some pictures here of um blackadder in the trenches pretending to be mad to get off um the uh going to the front and then another a cartoon from the actual time this is a tv show from the 1980s about the first world war and um this scum died soon died um we don't know how he died which is quite interesting did he actually go to the front and die there did he die kill himself um the rhyme scheme is really important the poetic form is really important notice how way rhymes with hooray it's actually we have to wait a long time to get that rhyme we have three rhymes in between strafe half and laugh um all yoking together the kind of cynicism that the people feel towards this man um half and laugh that you know they don't treat him seriously at all do they and the rhymes emphasize that we've got the echo though of way and hooray um it's not a immediately obvious rhyme it does glue the things together and we get a kind of ghostly echo when he says hooray if he if owen had put way and hooray next to each other as a couplet it would have sounded very trite it wouldn't have worked as well there's something rather um awful and ghastly about the way that rhyme has worked um look at the form of it um this poem really uh, is divided up into different sections um and it's not it owns different from many first world war poets he doesn't organize his poems in a really neat and clear way he they rhyme and they use rhythm in a very interesting way everything's broken up and fragmented um so we have these two lines at the end that are broken off from the others even though this is clearly all part of a verse um and that's important this fragmented quality to suggest the kind of fragmented world in which um these these uh, soldiers lived in uh, some questions for you to do please make sure you really have a go at doing these questions um what what is this soldier done that shows he might have a breakdown what reasons do they give for his breakdown and that's quite interesting looking at that i've discussed that with you what did they do with the soldier what happened to the soldier and what's the doctor's attitude towards it why is this poem ironic well there's a heavy irony at the end isn't there that they're saying hooray that one of their own men has died um and that's very ironic and it there's a very bitter tone to the poem annotate it and try and come up with your own creative response perhaps about when you've had a time when you've um really not been able to cope with something and people haven't understood they've treated you badly and then try and teach it to the person sitting next to you